Hello everyone. To compose as a video footage we've captured, we can't do without the editing tool. So let's get to know Premiere and its basic operations. Today we'll focus on two main parts to learn the fundamental aspects of Premiere. The first part covers its history and features, while the second part is about basic operations. Let's start with the history and features of Premiere. Let's take a look at the development history of Premiere. Premiere is a globally renowned film and video production software and is developed by Adobe. Adobe is a great company specialized in producing software for video and film production, such as TV shows. It offers advanced color correction powerful audio control and multiple nested timelines. Speaking of color correction, it refers to its strong color adjustment capabilities. Powerful audio control means it can record audio, reduce noise, and perform wireless audio operations. It's very useful. So, what's multiple nested timelines that I mentioned here? Nesting is a terminology in editing. We frequently use nesting in video editing. For instance, when we finished cutting a video into short clips, each lasting 2 to 3 seconds, we finished the cutting already. But what if we were asked to correct the color? Instead of applying color correction in every clip, which is inefficient, we nest them into a new timeline, apply color correction all at once which enhances efficiency. This is called nesting. We'll discuss this in detail later. Let's continue to talk about the development history of Premiere. It has gone through three major phases. The first phase was versions 1.0, 2.0 and onwards to 6.5 or 7.0. During this period, the digital version has come to a conclusion. It changed into the CS version, starting from CS to CS6. Afterward, there was another change. It became the CC version, abandoning the name of CS. So it was called CC onwards. This started in 2014 and continued to the present version in 2020. Speaking of this, it's important to note whether newer or older versions of Premiere are better. Are older versions acceptable? Premiere is a bit different from other software in this regard. While you can continue using older versions of other software, Premiere works better with the latest versions. Why is that? As technology advances, Devices with screens, such as our cameras, are improving the resolution, and 4K becomes more common nowadays. However, old versions of Premiere might not support their high resolutions. The concept of 4K didn't even exist in earlier years, so it's impossible for older versions to support higher resolution. They may also lack have the capability to create a large file. To meet the demands of modern times, the software updates itself quite frequently. So that's why we could use a powerful 4K editing function. Another reason for using a newer version is that devices used for shooting videos are updating constantly. If your software isn't updated, you won't be able to decode the latest video format. Whatever method you use, you won't be able to decode. That's why sometimes when some of my students try to import a video shoot by latest devices into older version of this software, after they imported the video, they found that it couldn't be opened 
or the screen became black or red, or when they opened it, they observed some screen flickering when playing the test clip. It's basically a situation where the screen is flickering back and forth, rather than allowing for smooth production. These problems are all caused by their older versions of the software. Premiere supports real-time preview. What does that mean? It means you can hit the spacebar to preview your work. After you are done with editing, adding subtitles and adjusting background, you could do a real-time review. It includes functions such as adding text and color correction. The operation of color correction really tests the performance of your computer. If your computer doesn't have a strong performance, it might experience some lag. The real-time review also includes the function to adjust the sound. You can adjust the volume or even reduce the noise and more. There are also some other functions in the real-time review. Next, subtitle. Premiere are also enables the addition of various subtitle effects to films or videos, and it also allows to export subtitles as PRTL files. These files can be imported into other Premiere projects. The subtitles cover a broad range, including intros, outros, and those that appear within the video. This includes scrolling text. For instance, when we watch TV shows, we could see a line of text rolling at the bottom. This might be advertisement for products. One advertisement I often see is about a pain relief patch. The advertising slogan is quite catchy. It also tells you to go to a pharmacy located at a certain place to get the product. So the text that are rolling is called scrolling text. And in outros, we could see text rising from the bottom to top, displaying production information. This kind of text also belongs to subtitle. So, what's the significance of Premiere having the capability to export this PRTL file? For example, you can simply edit one episode of a TV series by creating one set of subtitles. Then you can use this same set for the rest of the episodes. You only need to edit it once, rather than having to re-edit it every time. Regarding the new features added to Premiere, the first one is custom keyboard shortcuts, thus supporting aligning multiple audio and video tracks. The Mercury Playback Engine is also added to support more video cards. There have been improvements in exporting to Adobe Encoder. What is Adobe Encoder? It's a batch output software. Premiere is primarily an editing software, but for multiple video outputs, you need to use Adobe Encoder. For example, if you find you have to work overtime to finish the work, you can simply send all your files to Adobe Encoder. Which will continue processing them one by one, allowing you to rest. This significantly improves work efficiency. Continuing back to new features of Premiere, it allows you to simultaneously import to different media, such as for mobile phones, the web, and tablets. This greatly saves time during the exporting process. In terms of importing to mobile devices, there are also improvements in the new version, offering various possibilities. It has many options. Different types of iPhones offering different resolutions, 4K or 2K, and the same is true for phones from other brands. The resolution is different. Furthermore. The update includes seamless integration with the Adobe Audition in two ways. Adobe Audition is used for editing sound. The first method involves sending an audio to Audition for processing and then send it back. How could this be beneficial? It means that after we finish editing the sound, we could send the audio to Audition, and then send it back to Premiere. 
because Audition is very powerful software for editing sound. Sound editing functions in Premiere might not be so good as those in Audition, due to the fact that the two belong to the same company. The sound editing you did in Audition can be sent seamlessly back to Premiere. The second feature allows you to generate preview files for the entire video and import them into Audition for voiceovers and sound effects, and then seamlessly integrate all audio tracks back into Premiere. This is extremely useful. Another addition involves the seamless integration with Adobe's script writing software, Adobe Story. It means that the script is displayed during the editing progress. But this feature only supports English script. It may not so practical for Chinese users. But just imagine how great it is. As an editor, you could read the script while editing, which is so convenient. Premiere also offers a wide array of filter effects, similar to Photoshop. These filters enable you to change images, such as transforming, blurring, adjusting exposure, and adding texture. Let's move to the basic operations in Premiere. The first step is open the new project. Let's see how it is done in the software. The vision used is CC2020. Let's open the software, and then click Add New Project. You need to give a name. In this general setting page, you could see the location of your project. You can also see settings for video to display it in timecode or in inches plus frame. Normally, we don't change the settings, just pass it. Let's click Confirm. This is the workbench of Premiere. So how can we import video for editing? Do you see the framed area in the left corner? Do you see the text in the middle? Double-click here to import. That's how you import video. After that, in the project page, You double-click first, and then find the Sequence option. You could choose to create by building sequences or alternatively, by creating sequences based on the materials. These are the first two steps. The third step involves placing the materials from the project page onto the sequence track video 1 for editing. What does this mean? Let's take a look. This is our timeline. So where can we create sequence? We could create here. We could also create in the project page. In the option sequence, this is how it is done. Another way is creating sequences based on the materials, right? So we click sequence. What are included here? Common options are creating sequences for DV, high definition, HD, HDV. These are quite common. Then we see 1080 and 720 formats. These are the most common one. For instance, the frame size for 1080 is 1440 multiply 1080. And for 720, it is 1280 multiply 720. These are commonly used for videos. Let's consider an example for creating a 1080p25. What does a P signify? P stands for picture. Each second consists of 25 static frames. In other words, there are 25 frames per second in this video. After clicking Confirm, the timeline is not blank anymore. The reason is because we have a container the sequence itself serves as a container for placing video clips. Now we can drag our videos onto it. 
The material in V1 video thus comes to here. I cannot import movie into this software. I intended to use the movie as an example, but I couldn't make it. Let's see what else can I do. MP4 is fine. Let's drop the video. Press the space button to review. The food is delicious. Children play happily. Seniors laugh. We could use the space button to play or suspend. This is how we drag our video to be edited. Let's come back. A brief summary about what we learned today. The main part is about Premiere, its functions and basic operations. We learned how to use Premiere, including how to set a projecting, how to add video, how to add sequence, and then save a file and import. So, this is all for today. See you next time.